from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's The Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, welcome to this preview of HPE's Discover Madrid storage news. We're going to unpack that. My name is Dave Vellante. And Hewlett Packard Enterprise has a six months cadence of shows. They have one in, in, in the June timeframe in Las Vegas and then one in Europe. Uh, this year, again, it's in Madrid. And you always see them announce products and innovations uh, coinciding with those big uh, user shows. Uh, with me here is Patrick Osborne, who's the Vice President and, and General Manager of Big Data and Secondary Storage at HPE. Patrick, great to see you again. Great to be here, love theCUBE, thanks for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. So let's, uh, let's unpack some of these announcements. You guys, as I said, you're on this six month cadence. Uh, you've got sort of three big themes that you're vectoring into. Maybe you could start there. Yeah, so uh, within HPE storage and big data, we're, you know, we're, our point of view is around intelligent storage and intelligent data management. And underneath that, we've kind of vectored it on three pillars that you talked about. Uh, AI driven, um, and so essentially bringing the intelligence, self-managing, self-healing to all of our storage platforms and big data platforms. Uh, built for the cloud, right? We've got a lot of use cases and user stories, um, and you've seen from uh, an HPE perspective, hybrid cloud, you know, is a big investment we're making in addition to the edge. Uh, and the last is uh, delivering all of our capabilities from product perspective, uh, solutions and services as a service, right? So GreenLake is something that we started uh, a few years ago and being able to provide that type of elastic, you know, um, purchasing experience for our customers is going to weave itself, you know, in further products and solutions that we announce. So I like your, your strategy around AI. AI of course gets a lot of buzz these days. You guys are taking a practical approach. The Nimble acquisition you know, gave you some capabilities there uh, in predictive maintenance. You've, you've, you've pushed it into your automation capabilities. Yep. So let's, let's talk about the hard news uh, specifically around InfoSight. Yeah, so um, InfoSight is, is an incredible platform and what you see is that we've been uh, not only uh, giving co customers richer experiences on top of InfoSight that go uh, further up into the stack, mm -hmm. so we're providing recommendation engines, so we've got this whole concept of cross-stack analytics that go from you know, your app and your virtualization layer through the physical infrastructure. So we've had a number of, uh, of of uh, pieces of that that we're announcing um, to give very rich AI-driven guidance to customers, you know, to fix specific problems. Uh, we're also extending it to more platforms, right? We just announced last week um, the ability to run uh, InfoSight on our server platforms, right? So we're starting off on a journey of providing that, which we're doing at the storage and, and networking layer, weaving in our server platforms. So essentially, um, you know, platforms like uh, ProLiant, Synergy, Apollo, all of our valued computers platforms um, so we are we're doing some really cool stuff not only it, it providing you know the experience on new platforms but richer experiences uh, certainly around uh, performance bottlenecks on 3PAR, right? So we're, we're getting deeper AI-driven recommendation engines, uh, as well as what we call an AI-driven resource planner uh, for Nimble. So when, if you take a look at it from a, um, a tops-down view, this isn't AI marketing. We're actually applying these techniques um, and machine learning within our install base in our fleet, which is growing larger as we extend support for more platforms that actually make people's lives easier from a storage administration perspective. And that was a big part of the, the acquisition, that IP, that, that, that machine intelligence IP, you obviously had to evaluate that and the complexity of bringing it across the, the portfolio we live in this API driven world. Nimble was a very modern platform. Mm -hmm. So that facilitated that injection of that intelligence across the platform. And that's what we're seeing now. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. And you go from essentially tooling up these platforms for this very rich telemetry, really delivering uh, a differentiated support experience that takes a lot of the, uh, the manual um, interactions and interventions from a human perspective out of it. And now we're moving in with these three announcements that we've made um, into you know, things that are doing predictive analytics, recommendations, and automation you know, at the end of the day. So we're really making, trying to make uh, people's lives easier from an admin perspective and giving them time back to work on higher value activities. Well, let's talk about the cloud. You know, HP doesn't have a public cloud like an Amazon or, or an Azure. You partner yep. with those guys, uh, but you have the you have cloud volumes, which is you know cl cloud-like. It's actually 
cloud from a business model perspective. Explain what Cloud Volumes is and what's the news here. Yeah, so um, we've got a great service. It's called HPE Cloud Volumes, and we, you'll see uh, throughout the year uh, uh, us extending more user stories and experiences for hybrid cloud, right? So we have Cloud Bank, you know, which is focuses on secondary storage. Cloud Volumes is for primary storage users. So it is a cloud, public cloud adjacent storage as a service and it allows you to go into the, into the portal, enter your credentials, you can uh, enter in your credit card number and essentially get storage as a service um, as, a, as an adjacent or replacement data service for, for example, um, EBS from, from Amazon. So you're able to stand up storage as a service within a co-location facility uh, that we manage and it's you know, completely delivered as a service. And then um, our, our announcement for that is that, so what we've done in, in the Americas is you can um, essentially apply compute instances from the public cloud to that storage. So it's in a co-location facility that's very close from a latency standpoint to the public cloud. Um, now we're going to be extending that service into Europe, so UK, Ireland, and for the EMEA users, um, as well as now we can also support persistent storage workloads for Docker and Kubernetes. And this is a big win for a lot of customers that want to do continuous improvement, continuous uh, development, and use those containerized frameworks. Um, and then you can essentially um, you know, integrate with your on-prem storage to your off-prem, uh, and then pull in the compute from the cloud. Okay, so you got that right once run anywhere yep. sort of model. I was going to ask you, well, why would I do this instead of EBS? I think you just answered that question. It's because you now can do that anywhere. Hybrid is a key theme here, right? Yeah, also too, from a, a resiliency perspective, performance and durability perspective, the service that we provide is, um, you know, certainly six nines, you know, very high performance from a latency perspective. Um, you know, we've been doing, we've been in the enterprise storage game for quite some time, so we, we you know, we feel we've got a really good service just from the technology perspective as well. And and the European piece, I, I presume a lot of that is, well, of course, GDPR, the, the fines went, went into effect in May of, of 2018. Yep. Uh, there's there's a lot of discussion about, okay, data can't leave a particular locality, you know, it's especially onerous in, in, in Europe, but probably other places as well. So there's a, there's a data locality uh, governance, compliance mm -hmm. angle here too, is there not? Yeah, absolutely, and for us, um, you know, if you take a, uh, a specific industry like healthcare, you mm -hmm. know, for example, so you have to have a pretty clear line of sight for your da data provenance, so it allows us to provide the service in these locations for a healthcare customer or a healthcare ISV, you know, SaaS provider, to be able to, you know, essentially point to where that data is, um, you know, and uh, so for us, it's going to be an entrance into that vertical, you know, for hybrid cloud uh, use cases. All right, so. So again, you got the AI driven piece, the, the cloud piece. I, I see as a service, which is the third piece, is the cloud is one and as a service is one A. It's almost like a feature of cloud. But yep. So let's unpack that a little bit. What are you announcing in, in as a service and what's your position there? Yeah, so our vision is to be able to provide an as a service experience for uh, almost everything we have that we provide our customers, whether it's an individual product, whether it's a solution, or actually like a segment, right? So um, in, in the space that I work in, in big data and secondary service, secondary storage, uh, backup as a service, for example, right, is something that customers want, right? They don't want to be able to manage that on their own, buy piece parts, architect the whole thing. So what we're able to do is provide your primary storage, your secondary storage, your backup ISV. So in this case, we're going to be providing backup as a service um, through GreenLake with Veeam. Um, and then we even can bring in uh, your cloud capacity. So for example, Azure Blob Storage, which would be your tertiary um, storage you know, from an archive perspective. So for us, it really allows us um, to provide customers an, ex an experience that um, you know, is more of an, it's an experience. Uh, cloud is a destination, you know, we're providing a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud experience, not only from a technology perspective, but also from a, a purchasing, uh, flex up, flex down, flex out experience. Uh, and we're going to keep on doing that over and over uh, for the next, you know, foreseeable future. So you've been doing GreenLake for, for a while yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how's that going and, and what's new here? Yeah, so that's been going great. We have you know well over uh, I think at this point 500 petabytes under management you know under GreenLake, um, and so the service is uh, is it's interesting when you think about it. You know we um, 
when we were designing this, you know, we thought just like the public cloud, the compute as a service would take off. But from our perspective, I think one of the biggest pain points for customers is managing data, you know, storage and big data. So storage as a service has grown very rapidly. So these uh, these services are very popular, uh, and we'll keep on iterating on them, you know, to cr create maximum velocity. One of the other things that's interesting about some of these accounting rules that have taken place is that customers cede to us the um, the ability to do architecture, right? So we're essentially creating no snowflakes for our customers, and they get better outcomes from a business perspective. So we help them with the architecture, we help them with you know planning and architecture of the you know the actual equipment, and then they get a very defined business outcome in SLA that they pay for as a service, right? So it's a win-win across the board. It's really good. Okay, so no snowflakes, as in not, not everything's custom. Absolutely. And, and then, uh, so that lowers not only your cost, it lowers the customer's cost. So let's take an example like that. Let's take backup as a service, yeah. which uh, you know, is part of, of GreenLake. How does that work? If I want to engage with you on backup as a service? Yeah, that? so we have a, a team of folks in, in Point Next that can engage like very far up in the front end, right? So they say, hey, listen, I know that I need to do a major re-architecture for my secondary storage. Can HPE, can you help me out? You know, so we provide advisory services. We have, you know, um, well-known architectures, you know, that fit, uh, you know, a set of, uh, you know, well-known mission critical, business critical applications at a typical customer site. So we can drive that all the way from the inception of that project to, you know, to implementation. We can take, you know, more customized a, a view or, a, you know, a road-mapped approach to customers mm -hmm. where they want to, you know, bite off, you know, a little bit of as a time, right, and use things like flex, flex capacity um, and then weave in a full green lake, you know, implementation. So it's very flexible in terms of the way we can implement it. So we can go soup to nuts or we can get down to, you know, very small granular uh, pieces of infrastructure. Just sticking on, on on data protection for a second, I saw a stat the other day. It's a fairly fairly well you know popular, pro often quoted stat. Was Gartner? I think is fifty percent of customers are going to change their backup platform yep. by like twenty twenty three or something. Um, and you think about. And I, by the way, I think that's legitimate stat. And when you, when you talk to customers about why, well, things are changing. It, it, cloud, multi cloud. Uh, things like GDPR, uh, ransomware, uh, uh, digital transformation. I want to get more out of my, mm -hmm. my, my data than just insurance, my backup than just insurance. Yep. I want to do analytics. So there's all these other sort of evolving things. I presume your your backup as a service is evolving with that. Um, yeah, what are you seeing there? Yeah, we're definitely seeing that the secondary storage market is very dynamic uh, in terms of uh, the expectations from customers are, you know, they're changing and changing very rapidly. And so not only are we providing things like GreenLake and Backup as a service, we're also seeking new partners in this space. Um, so one of the big announcements that we'll make at Discover is we are doing a, a, a pretty big amplification of our partnership uh, in an OEM uh, relationship with Cohesity, right? So a lot of customers are looking for uh, a secondary platform from a consolidation standpoint. So being able to run a number of um, very different and disparate workloads from a secondary storage perspective and make them you know, work. So it's a great platform, scale out. It's going to run on a number of our uh, HPE platforms, right? So we're going to be able to provide customers that whole you know, solution from HPE partnering with Cohesity. Just so, you know, in general, this secondary storage market's hot um, and you know, we're, we're making some bets in, in our ecosystem right now. now you also have uh, big data in your title, so you have, yeah. you're responsible for that portfolio. Uh, I know Apollo in the HPC world was, was has been you know, had a foothold there. There's a lot of synergies between high performance computing and, and big data. Absolutely. What's going on in the big data world? Yeah, so big data is uh, one of our fastest growing segments within HPE. I'd say big data and analytics and um, some of the things that are going on with uh, AI and commercial you know, high performance applications. So for us, uh, we're, you know, we have a new platform that we're announcing, uh, our Gen 10 version of Apollo 4200. It's definitely a, the workhorse of our Apollo uh, server line uh, for you know, applications like Cloudera, Horton, Works, MapR, we see you know Apache Spark, Kafka, you know a number of these, um, uh, as well as some of these newer workloads around HPC. So TensorFlow, Cafe, H2O, um, and so that platform you know allows us with really good uh, compute, memory, and storage uh, mix from a footprint perspective, and it, and it certainly scales um, into rack level infrastructure. It, that part of the business for us is growing very quickly. I think a lot of customers are using these big data analytics techniques to transform their business. 
business and you know as we go along and help them um, you know it's certainly uh, it's been a, it's been a really cool ride to see all this uh, implemented at customer sites. You know, with all this talk about sort of big data and analytics and cloud and AI, you sort of, you know, get lost, uh, or the infrastructure kind of gets lost, but, but you know, the plumbing still matters. Yeah. Right? And so d underneath this, so we saw the, the flash trend and that really had a major impact on certainly the storage business specifically, but generally the overall marketplace. I mean, you really be hard to support a lot of these emerging workloads without flash. And that stack continues to evolve, that pyramid, if you will. Um, so you've got flash memory now replacing much of the spinning disk yep. space. Uh, you've got you know, DRAM, which obviously is the most expensive, highest performance, and there seems to be this layer emerging in, in the middle, this storage class memory yep. layer. What are you guys doing there? Is there anything new there? Yeah, so um, we've got a couple things cooking in that space. Uh, in general, like when you talk about the infrastructure, it is important, right? And we're trying to help customers not only by providing really good product um, and scalable infrastructure, uh, things like Apollo, or, you know, our systems Nimble 3PAR, we're also trying to provide an experience around that too. So, you know, combining things like InfoSight, InfoSight on storage, InfoSight on servers, and Apollo for big data workloads is something that we're going to be delivering, um, you know, in the future. Uh, the platforms really matter. So, um, you know, we're we're going to be introducing NVMe and storage class memory into mm -hmm. our what we feel is the industry leading portfolio for our, you know, for flash storage. Uh, so between Nimble and 3PAR. Uh, we'll have um, those platforms will be, you know, and they're NVMe ready, uh, and we'll be making some uh, some product announcements uh, on, you know, the availability of that type of media. So if you think about using it in uh, a, a platform like 3PAR, right, industry leading from a performance perspective, uh, allow us to get sub, you know, 200 millisecond performance uh, for, you know, very mission mission critical latency intolerant applications, and it's a great architecture. It scales uh, in parallel. Active, 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 right? So you can get you know quite a bit of performance uh, from uh, a very you know a large three-par system, um, and we're going to be introducing NVMe into that equation uh, as a part of this announcement. So, so I, I mean, we see this as critical uh, for years. We, of course, in the storage business, you talk about how you know storage is growing, storage is growing, storage is growing, and we would show the charts up or to the right, and and but it was always like yeah, and somehow you got to store it, you got to manage it, and I might have to move it. It's a real real pain. The whole equation is changing now because of things like flash, things like GPU, storage class memory, mm. NVMe. Now you're seeing, and of course all this you know, ML and, and deep learning tech, and now you're seeing things that you're able to do with the data that you've never been able to do before, Absolutely. new emerging use cases, and, and so it's not just lots of data, it's completely new use cases, and it's driving new demands for infrastructure, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we there's some macroeconomic tailwinds um, that we had this year, but HPE had a you know phenomenal year um, this year, and you know we, we're looking at some pretty good outlooks into next year as well. So, yeah, from from our perspective, the the requirement for for customers for latency improvements, bandwidth improvements, and total addressable capacity improvements is never stops, right? So it's all it, it's always going on. And it's the pipe, the data pipeline is getting longer. Uh, the amount of services and experiences that you're tying on to existing applications keeps on augmenting, right? So for us, there's always new capabilities, always new ways that we can improve our products. We use for things like InfoSight, and a lot of the predictive analytics, we're using those techniques for our, uh, you know, ourselves to improve our customers' experience with our products. So it's been, it's a very, uh, you know, virtuous cycle in the industry right now. Well, Patrick, thanks for coming in to theCUBE and, and, and unpacking these announcements at, uh, D at Discover Madrid. You got, you're doing a great job sort of executing on the storage plan. Every time I see you, there's new announcements, new innovations. You guys are hitting all your marks, so congratulations on yeah, that. Great. And uh, HPE, intelligent storage, intelligent data management. So if you guys have data needs, you know where to come to. All right, thanks again, Patrick. Great, thank you so much. Talk to you soon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante from theCUBE. We'll see you next time.